parenthood. Today's the, uh, the last Sunday of this series. It's um, been four weeks long. I don't know about you, but I have really enjoyed it. Uh, maybe I've enjoyed it because I kind of have a different vantage point of uh, the whole big thing called parenthood. Um, back in the day, back in the day, it sounds like Grandpa Meyer here. Back in the day, uh, I was all about being a trophy parent. I wanted to win the trophy for having the best kid. Uh, and I was pretty certain for a while I had the best kid. I mean, it was, very, it was a variable, right? On any certain day, it'd be like, you're the best kid. Ever. No, I don't think I'm going to give that to you now. And then uh, I'd give it to him every now and then. But I measured it by all sorts of um, accomplishments and successes and achievements, um, none of which are bad in and of themselves, but if that is used as the measure of being a trophy kid, uh, I was already in the weeds. I was already in trouble. But that was, um, you know, I mean, I kind of did it like I was taught to do it, and that's what you did. Uh, you tried to raise a trophy kid, because at the end of the day, when the trophies were handed out, what I had made up in my head was that that trophy for them was actually for me, right? So if, if uh, like they got an A, I got an A. Uh, if they got perfect attendance, whew, which is a miracle right there. Let's just say right now. Um, that really meant that I was super parent about getting everybody up and getting everybody dressed and off to school, which I don't even see how that happens. But uh, so I had this measuring stick in my head that how they went, I went. How they went, I went. How they went, I went. That is all great and fine until the trophy presentation doesn't go the way you think it's going to go. And then you've got to make up a story about, well, what went wrong? Either you went wrong or they went wrong, right? So somewhere in there as the story, as the trophy presentations began to change, um, I had to begin to rethink my definition. For instance, um, our firstborn is a daughter. How many of y'all have firstborn daughters? I know we've had this little survey before. They're like the best. They're like rock. How many of y'all are firstborn daughters out there? Raise your hands. Oh, yeah. Y'all are like leaders. You take names when the teacher goes out. You are in charge. You are line leader. You are like little rock star girls, right? And we as parents look at y'all and we think, well, it is all because of our parenting skills. We have made you what you are, and thank you very much. And then our next two were twin boys, and still are twin boys. Uh, and the whole paradigm changed. Everything Susan and I, uh, the kid's mother thought we did so right, we suddenly were like having to stay after school, having before school conferences, and going places we never knew we would go before. Lou Starrett. Um, <laughs> Oh, that's just, we made the tour. We've been to all of them. Uh, City of Garland has a very nice jail, by the way. Uh, it's a little story I'll have to tell you real quick. So when they were uh, 16 or 17, we lived out in Mesquite, and one of their favorite things to do was go fishing at Lake Ray Hubbard. Harmless, totally harmless, right? Except when, A, you're on somebody else's property. Sometimes people don't like that whole trespassing thing. And then uh, sometimes if you have a beverage that you're not supposed to have and you're consuming that on private property, I, every one of these escalates the charge until you get to sleep in a room without a pillow and no shoelaces in your tennis shoes. You'll figure it out later. It all works together. So here's what I want to invite y'all into. And if, if you think I'm nuts, that, that's fine. But I want us today to reframe what it means to be a trophy parent, a successful parent, or a successful kid. And so um, some of y'all are going to agree with me, and that's fun, because we all like people who agree with us, and others aren't, and I'm all right with that. Uh, here's what I want us to do. We're going to reset the contest rules right here and right now. To turn out okay means the following. Able to do life more or less okay. Tackle all that comes their way from what we call easy breezy at our house to hard, big, messy stuff. Thoughtfully, the world is bigger than we are. Responsibly, with a heart for God. 
If we can accomplish those, I think that's jackpot. In my, in my world, that's a win. And uh, here's the second, and maybe the most important, that the whole thing is about the journey, not the destination. Because when you get there, you're going to do kind of like, uh, again, I will age myself, Peggy Lee. It's not, it's not that big a deal. Y'all go home and Google that song. What's the name of the song, David Taylor? Is that all there is? It's real melancholy. If you're real sad and depressed one day, go home and put that on and listen to it over and over again. Uh, it is about the journey. Say that with me. It is about the journey. And the trophies, in my mind, should be handed out along the way. Along the way. Not saved until the magic end, whatever that is that you have already made up. This morning, we're going to use some scriptures as what I'm calling our guidepost. And um, I have taken great preacher liberty with them. Uh, they're coming from uh, the translation known as The Message. I would encourage you to uh, write these on your hand, go home and read them at length numerous, numerous times later on in the day. The first one that's going to pop up on the screen is 1 Peter 3, verses 8 and some more. Uh, I thought, you know, we would read a whole bunch of these, and then this morning I thought, that, that's, no, y'all can read this on your own, but we're going to just hit the high points. 1 Peter 3, be agreeable. How many times have you said that at home? Can everybody just get along? Be agreeable, be sympathetic, be loving, be compassionate, be humble. That goes for all of us, no exceptions. Here's the real fun part. No retaliation, no sharp tongue sarcasm. Ah, uh, game over. All right, <laughs> moving forward. First Peter 4, 7 through 11. We're going to kind of jump down in here a little bit. Most of all, love each other as if your life depended on it. Love makes up for practically anything. Be quick to give a meal to the hungry, a bed to the homeless, cheerfully. Be generous with the different things God gave you. And then the last one, uh, somehow it got lost in cyberspace, so just listen up. Colossians 3, 1 and 2. So if you're serious about living this new resurrection life with Christ, act like it. Pursue the things over which Christ presides. And listen real carefully here. This is a great phrase. Don't shuffle along, eyes to the ground, absorbed with the things right in front of you. Look up, be alert to what's going on in Christ. My friends, this is the word of God for the people of a God. And we all said, thanks be to God. Let's pray. Holy God, open our eyes, open our hearts, illumine our thinking, O oh God, in new and bold ways. Amen. So, uh, as preachers are supposed to do, we think all the time about, well, how do you talk about this in a new and different way that nobody else has ever thought of before so that people will be, you know, caught up in your words? Uh, I don't know that I did that, but it dawned on me the other day that this whole parenting journey thing, uh, there's a perfect metaphor in my mind for it, and it is you and your kids learning how to drive. Hmm, they said. How many of y'all have your learner's permit right now? How many of you can't wait to get your learner's permit? <laughs> I know, it'll, it'll happen someday. Uh, how many of you are I kept already like just ace drivers? Parents, this is y'all, right? Y'all are the authorities. I'm like, honey, am I an ace driver? No, don't raise your hand, sweetheart. <laughs> Work with me here. From... Um, for kids, and, and you know, I'm going to project that there was a day I was a kid, I could not wait to learn how to drive. Because driving meant what? Freedom. You, in, your, in our heads, in our kid head, it, we made up that now the world is ours. The world is ours. We can go wherever we want. We can do whatever we want. Now, of course, I mean, we didn't live into the story of like, well, who's going to buy the gas in your car and who's going to pay the insurance? And parents are always such downers when it comes to that kind of, that kind of stuff. But um, it is much like life. The, op the swinging open of this grand door that we parents have held shut and protected from our little darlings for a long time because we don't want them to know what's out there. 
But then on the other hand, as we begin to contemplate it, we're like, you know, that would really be handy if they could go to the store. What if they took their little sister to soccer practice? You know, this would really make our life a whole lot easier. So we begin rationalizing it that way, and some of us got close to it because of all the convenience of it. And then we we talked to State Farm or Allstate. And in our case, I'm just going to warn you now, if you have twin boys that you add to your car, you have to make a choice between eating and driving. So you add them to the car insurance, and you think, this is going to be a good thing. Uh, But you get these little moments. Kids, we have these moments where we get anxious because in our world, you are priceless cargo. You're priceless. And we laugh and joke and we're all cavalier about it. But as we begin to live into this possibility, we think, oh my gosh, th- um, I, I don't know about this. And we get very anxious. And it's not that we want to sit on your, quote, freedoms. It is that we want to protect you from all the big bad stuff that we know is out on the other end of that thing called the highway of life. And so we start kind of reining in, well, yeah, you can drive to the school and that's all. Because we pretty much determined, you know, or you can go to Tom Thumb and back. And, you know, each one of these steps for us with you is a milestone. And we are anxious and we are wondering. And nowadays we have amazing technology that we can kind of look at and go, well, they said they were going to Doug's house, but it appears as though they're at Jackie's house. How are are we going to solve this? Uh, But so here's what it comes down to. I got to hurry up. Um, We're pretty convinced we have taught you everything we know about it. Driving, that's our little metaphor, right? You are pretty convinced that you know everything there is to need to know about it driving. And then there's this whole other thing that you know so much more about that you don't even, we don't even know you know. All right, thank you, Google. Um, Well, so here's parent land. We're very moderately confident that we have imparted on you everything there is to know. Then here's kid land. I know everything, right? Have y'all ever said that? I know so much you don't need to keep talking. Well, right here in the middle is a gap. Guess what? That is where the majority of life stuff is going to happen. Somewhere between this land that we thought we told you everything there is to do, you think, oh, no, I know everything, and oh, my gosh. Right there is the majority... It's going to happen there. If it's going to be messy, it's going to be there. There's going to be things like, oh, I thought we told you about. And they're going to say, no, you never did. And then it just escalates and people will cry. Uh, So uh, we have all had those. Let me, um, you know, because my life's kind of an open book. Let me tell you all about the one that still resonates with me to this day. And it's um, driving the car over high bridges. Anybody else have this? You know, it's a real live uh, Google phobia. I mean, you can, it's some big word I can't pronounce. Uh, and I think it goes back to the fact that when I was a kid growing up in the big metropolitan town of Channel View, Texas, uh, you took driver's ed in the summer from a coach. Do y'all remember those days? Coach Brown, I can still remember him. He wore coach shorts and he wore a uh, shirt and he, he dipped and he had a little can and he would spit uh, Chewing back in it, people still do that, right? In Channel View, they did it a lot. And uh, you would drive very cautiously, and he would have a break on his side. And uh, Channel View's flat. The only uh, river you ever go over, or water, back in that day was the San Jacinto River. And it was just like, you're over it. No big deal. Well, uh, so, you know, I, of course, aced driver's ed because I am who I am. And, uh, but nobody ever said, you know, there's going to be some really tall bridges someday in your life. And they're going to be the kind, kind of like if you're going north on 35 and you want to start going west on 121, what they call the flyover. You know why they call it the flyover? Because if you go, you are going to fly over that bridge. I will plummet to my death someday off of that bridge, I am sure. But you go and your car is at such an incline, what can you see? Nothing except the hood of your car. Does that make anyone else have a stomachache? My uh, stomach starts hurting. 
My hands get sweaty. I got a little bit of sweat right here. And uh, I try uh, to think about ways to get around that. And um, I can tell you stories of crossing the Mississippi River and having like anxiety attack. And I'm that guy that everybody else hated because I pulled to the inside lane and went 20 miles an hour. And I'm sure I caused other people havoc, but I got to the other side safe. In part, it got worse when I was driving and my kids were in the car. Why? Because I have you guys, precious cargo. We uh, forget sometimes as parents to teach you about all the different things, including high bridges. There's going to be a lot of high bridges in your life. And hopefully you won't develop them into the phobia that I have. I'm fine. I'm getting through it, by the way. Uh, but there's all sorts of other adventures that are going to come your way, all of which parents, part of uh, being a trophy-winning parent means we're going to do our darndest to sit down and anticipate all of these. Bridges, for me, is the metaphor for decision-making. Uh, as a kid, we never talked about how you make a good choice because you were told, here was your next best choice, and usually your mom or my mom or dad made that for me. So I was never really a participant in making and thinking through all the pros, the cons, the what ifs, the could be's, and being responsible for the outcome of that choice. And then you, we're just gonna ride this little metaphor here as far as we can. So you're in the car, road conditions. You think that when you start doing life, guys, that the roads are gonna be perfectly smooth the whole way. Right? Wrong. Uh, potholes. I wonder what's going to be your very first big pothole. Hmm. Could very well be, let's just talk about things of most recent. Um, nobody invited you to homecoming. If that's your story, that's a big, painful pothole, right? Or somebody invited you to homecoming and then at the very end blew you off. Ooh. You need to tell your dad about that one. Uh, <laughs> That uh, road conditions, i.e. life, are going to change literally every second. And then there's this thing called construction, right? Plan on it, but just know it's going to make you crazy. And in the middle of it, you still have to make split-second really good choices when overnight they changed your exit. But I used to always do it this way. Yeah, but no, today, starting today, we're going to start doing it this way. And there's going to be all sorts of situations in life that are just like that. And in that moment, you have to make, we both as parents and kids have to make the very best next decision based on what? All that we have. Our guidepost, our conversations, the internal stuff that makes us who we are. We don't even need to start talking about traffic, do we? Who... Who, for whom in here does traffic take you to your crazy place? Anybody? Because those cars purposely did that. They got in your way when you didn't plan on them being there. You already left the house five minutes late. And now you're going to be how late? That's where I go in my head. Oh, my gosh. Now I'm going to be 30 minutes late. And so I plan for a while how to solve it. But everyone else has planned on how to solve it. One of my favorites is coming back from the hill country, Austin, anywhere, and you're coming up 35, and you go and you stop and you have some snacks at Bucky's, and then you get back on 35, and the entire town of Austin has evacuated and is heading north on 35 on the road and on the access road, right? Been there? And it just takes some of us to our crazy place. And... Uh, Welcome to life. There are going to be things that come your way that the best laid plans blow up. You go back to your guidepost and go, okay. Take a deep breath. Doug said this is called life. Get over it. We're going to not talk today about things like weather. There's that whole thing when it ices in Dallas, people lose their minds. Car issues, the car will not start. You've done everything you know to do. I promise you, go home and play with these. Every one of these has a connect back to life and to what you're going to do.
But here's, uh, here's the good news. You as a parent, you as a kid, have within you the ability to work this out. And that is where I think um, you'll find a win as a parent, as a parent who wants their kid to grow up being responsible, thoughtful, with God in their heart. If we help you learn every day to be a problem solver, and a problem solver that approaches the world with uh, what I like to call confident humility. Those two words don't seem uh, like they should go together, but I think they're actually very well suited for each other. That you can in your heart know that the next step you are making is the next best choice based on everything you have learned from us, have witnessed from us, things you have seen us do that you're not gonna do again and again. And you live into it with the confidence of knowing that we know you can do this. That we have taught you to be bold and confident, living as God would have you to live every day in every way. And then, my friends, when they hand out the trophies, we're going to get one. And it's not going to be a participation trophy, but it's going to be a trophy for realizing that you are living the life exactly like God wants you to live it. Let's pray. Holy God, thank you for this uh, amazing, phenomenal opportunity that you have given us to live into this world as kids, as parents, as kids who someday might be parents. Help us, oh God, to be that person you know we can be. In your name we pray. Amen.